Welcome everybody to this video where I'm going to explain horizontal and vertical alignments for road design. Let's first off start off with the horizontal alignment. So in CAD mode, I would go to draw and draw lines, not chained lines. I would go to lines and I would identify where the straights need to be. So I would go and draw a straight here. I would draw that there needs to be a straight there and I would draw that there needs to be a straight there. Then I would go and consult the, the guidelines for the design that you're working with. You'd need to find out what your local municipality or your highways division, what their curve radiuses need to be for the design speed of the road. I can't uh, tell you what those radiuses need to be. You need to find that out. Once you've got those radiuses, I would then say to go to fillet and then say trim both entities and then place the radius here so i'm going to choose 50 and i would then go and draw the radius you'll see it gives options if it's not working the best is to press escape and press spacebar and try again there you can see it's found the radius that i'm looking for the filleted radius and i put that in over here i can then go from here and put in that radius there I've now got my horizontal alignment that I'm looking for. I would then go and say tools, lines to polyline and click on the side that I want the stake value zero to be on. And I would say yes to delete the existing CAD lines and leave me with a polyline. You can then see in the properties I've got a lightweight polyline and that is now my horizontal alignment. That's one of the ways of doing it. Another way that you can do it is if we go and put on some boundaries. So if we're working with town planners boundaries or land surveyors boundaries, um, it's good to have those switched on. Um, this one is in two portions. So I'll switch both of them on. And here you can see I've got my boundary. So if we go to this road, for instance, um, well, let's put on the roads first as well so we can have a look at that. I'm going to go and switch on the roads. And here's my roads switched on. I've got to design this road. So, one of the functions I would use is to go to toolkit mode, which is this mode over here. And then I would go to um, Toolkit, General, Draw Centered Line. And I would say, yes, I'd like to snap. So I would click on these corners. So those two corners I clicked on. I then click on those two corners. Now it's found the center for me. I then can go to this corner here and say, click there. It will trim the line for you there. And I'll go and click over here and here. And then I would end off clicking here and here. So I've got those two done now, that route. But I'd like to have, I'm going to leave that as a kink. So I've pressed escape to end that function. I'm going to leave that as a kink. And over here, I'm going to put in a filleted radius. So I'm going to go to modify fillet. And I'm going to choose the radius of 50. And I'm going to click on this one and this one. And I can see it's traced it for me that I'm happy with it. So I select it. There you can see it's traced. Now, that radius, as I spoke about earlier, you need to find out the radiuses for your local municipality. So I'm going to click on this one as well. See it's doing that incorrectly. I'm not happy with that. So all I do is I press escape, press space bar, and try it again there. I'm happy with that one. Right. Um, that one I'm going to leave as a kink and not have a filleted radius in just to show what happens with it if you don't put it in. I'm going to go to tools, lines, to polyline, select it because I want to select on the side where stake value must be zero. And I say yes, remove the original. So now I'm left with a lightweight polyline. This is your friend. This tells you what you've selected. You can even dock it if you wish. Um, then we've got those two. So that's the two ways that I mostly work with lines. The one is when I'm working in an, uh, with a cadastral boundaries environment. And the other one is when I'm working with a Greenfields project 
um, and I want to identify where all the straights are and then put the curves in. Great, so we've got those two. Now we need to go to roads mode and I need to put in a road here. So I'm going to go to in roads mode, I'm going to go to file, select road file and I need to start a new road. So I'll start a new road. I'm going to call this road number seven. You can call it whatever you like. And then I'm going to go to the three little dots here and I'm going to go to my desktop. I always keep a shortcut key for the knowledge base files. So if you don't have the shortcut key, it's it's your C drive, users, public, public documents, knowledge base. You can always go back one, right click and create a shortcut to your desktop. If I can find it, send to uh, do desktop shortcut. So inside knowledge base, I'll go and say, I would like to look at the examples and I'd like to look at the templates. Okay, it's not there. Road templates, there we go. So that's examples, road templates, and I'm going to choose a single carriageway. But for an urban environment. And here you can see you've got the single carriageway for the urban environment. That is actually quite big. 3.7 is more for a higher, higher order urban environment. Um, you'd probably want something to be a little bit smaller or narrower. Uh, let's have a look at the single eight. That looks a lot better because that's coming with sidewalks. Okay, the preview page is not loading for what I want, but we can look at that in another in another place. Like if, so we've got that loaded. We've got road number seven loaded and it will update here when I press OK because you need to highlight it here and press OK and then it makes it the active road. OK, now that we've got this road active, I'm going to go to in roads mode. I'm going to go to file option settings. I'm going to say use interactive road expert and automatically add the junctions um, so that it will put in the junctions along the top and the bottom with this. If you don't have intersections, then please don't worry about it. You can have it unticked. Um, but if you want to automatically put the junctions in modeled, not designed, you still need to go and do a junction verification. That's another whole video on YouTube already, which you can go and look at. Um, so I'm going to, I want it to model it for me. So I'm going to put, just do a search distance of 15 meters to look for any intersecting roads and interactive road expert. Some of the lecturers are saying that the interactive road expert doesn't help you learn a civil designer. Um, I would disagree with that. I think you need, it does help you automate the road design. Yes. But the key and uh, importance with this is not that it's automating it, that you and I can, can spend more time interrogating your final design, making sure that the horizontal alignment meets the design speed, the sight distance, your vertical alignment, K values for the curves are correct for the design speed and that there's sight distance. So I think it's far better that we have this automated, the modeling automated, and you spend more time tweaking the design itself, the final design, and bringing that into your design report for review, that you discuss these points in your design report review for your lecturer. Okay, so we can press OK. And now that we've got these put through, I would say that you need to go to, um, we've got the road active, and we can now go to the regression and extract alignments. We're going to extract the horizontal alignment from CAD and along that route we're going to pick up a vertical alignment. The vertical alignment will be along the natural ground. You will need to go and update that because you don't drive on the topography of the road, you drive on a design speed. 
so you can go and change that it just helps to get an idea of what your vertical should look like but you need to interrogate that vertical alignment and we're going to extract from CAD so I'm just going to zoom out I'll press ZW while I'm inside this mode just to zoom to this area and I'm going to select on this side I'm going to say yes to extract and it's now picked up that it can put a bow mouth over here I mean an intersection over here modeled not designed you still need to go and design it and then we need to put in an intersection here as well to actually go and take this modeled intersection and do a junction verification on it please look on YouTube we've made plenty of videos on junction verification okay now along this route um, if it's a um, urban road you can do one meter if it's uh, uh, arterial road you can do uh, 20 meters I have heard of highways using every 50 meters on the straights and 5 meters on the curves um, that's up to your your local authority so for this I'm going to do 10 meters and along my curves I'm going to do 5 I wouldn't do this on a highway on a highway I would do f uh, 20 and 5 okay so we now are going and extracting along the route it's going to go along the route here and it's going to extract cross sections from the natural ground and it's going to go and store it, store it in road layer 1 it's going to go from the start to the end I'm going to say to pick up 20 meters on the left 20 meters on the right and I'll say OK and I'll say OK now it's going and extracting those you see there's the 10 meters extraction and there's the 1 meter extraction now that message was warning you that it's designed it it's put the sidewalks in but it has not done a design for you your horizontal alignment you designed earlier there's your cross section so I went to sections graphical edit to look at my cross sections you can see it's picked up the other infrastructure here to see what infrastructure you can add to that depending on what you've put in you can go to crossing services or crossings and you can add all the other services that you want you can say show me everything so that all of it comes through if it's there it will show okay so we've got all the sidewalks and everything coming through um, and we've still got some intersections that you can do but that's I've got videos on YouTube on that now we've done the horizontal alignment earlier but remember that we made this one a kink so if we select this or if we press F4 while this is active you'll see that there's your horizontal curve has come through from the CAD here from the CAD but over here it hasn't come through from the CAD it's it's used the well there isn't a CAD for that kink so if I go to alignment horizontal edit you'll see that radius is zero there so I can make that 50 and I can press um, exit and yes and because we've got the horizontal um, the road expert switched on the thing automatically models if I press F4 again there you can see it's put in the radius for me um, in the real world you'd probably want to make this road a bit narrower because here you can see that your um, your boundaries your road footprint is larger than your boundaries okay so we've got that now sorted out now let's look at the vertical alignment remember I said we we don't we only model the vertical for you you need to go and if it's an if it's picked up a natural ground then you would need to go and convert this into you see there it's tying into your existing road on this side as well it's tying into your existing road but you need to go and make this vertical alignment work for your design when this is an urban environment you cannot have the vertical alignment sitting on the natural ground level it needs to be lower than the natural ground so that the storm water for the 1 in 20 year floods can flow into the road and away in an urban environment, not in a highway environment. Okay, so uh, to do that, you can go and look at your vertical alignment, make sure that 
the K values are matching the design speed of the road. What you can do as a guideline, you can go to your um, design criteria. I'm going to say this is a, um, a 50 kilometer road. So give me all the tips on the 50 kilometer road. And I'm going to go back to my vertical alignment edit. And now I can look at these items. You can also exaggerate it. I've exaggerated by 10, which helps to just make it a bit more bolder and stand out. And then you can start using these tools to, um, you can read at the bottom over here. This is to insert a point or VPI, to edit a VPI, to delete one, to move one, to raise one, to lower one, and so on. So that will go, that's going to help you. You can also see the crossing services here in because if you go to the ground lines button, you go to crossing services here, you'll see all the all the services have been placed in here. So any services running in your network crossing over the center line will show up. And now you can start to work on this vertical alignment, raising points and lowering points. Uh, because we have the design criteria switched on, it's going to ask you if you want to use the minimum length. You can say yes. So every time you move a point, it's going to take it from the natural ground. Now that the design criteria is switched on, and then it's going to ask you if you can apply the minimum curve length. But I would also probably recommend to delete some of these points. There's a little bit too many VPIs along this route because it's hugging the existing natural ground or draping the existing natural ground. Um, but And also to remember to be at least 300 or 200 moles below the natural ground. You can actually read that off here. here that here's the depth that's read over here. So as you're going along the road, you can see how deep you are. As I say, an urban road should not be at zero. An urban road should be at least, the center line should be at least 200 miles below the natural ground so that the urban can drain their properties during a storm event and that the, the um, road itself um, acts as a stormwater channel for everything above the one in five year flows. Everything below the one in five year flows should be flowing underneath the road in the pipe. Okay, I hope that helps you with your horizontal and vertical alignment for an urban design. Um, thank you very much.